Okay, uh, uh, listeners of uh, Utop Utopia Radio, here's my card, uh, Mr. Pearl. My name is Anton, I'm a reporter of uh, Utopia Radio. We are an internet station and we are very glad that, we, uh, that you take the time for us to make this interview. It's my pleasure, I'm glad to be able to do it. Yes. So I've read your book mm -hmm. and with a lot of listeners, I think, uh, don't know you, uh, don't you? Uh, because uh, it's relative new what you are doing, the reconnection. Here in Holland. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, can you explain uh, to people uh, what reconnection means? Well, the reconnection is us allowing ourselves to reconnect with our original fullness as beings, meaning as the spirit that we are having our human experience. But the more we allow ourselves to reconnect to the consciousness, the light of our true spirituality, then the more we find that we access and gain from enjoying or playing our game of humanity in this existence. So what happens is, under the concept of the reconnection, there are two different ways that people tend to access this. There's reconnective healing, mm -hmm. and then there's a process called the reconnection. Reconnective healing are healing sessions that um, allow you to simply interact with these sensations. For instance, let me have your hand for a minute. Just, just hold your hand right here, just open it a little bit. Perfect. Now, what I do is I come in with my hand and I begin to feel. Can you see how your fingers are moving? I'm feeling them moving. Right. Now, see how they move more as I play. Yeah. So, obviously, this is one of the first things that began to fascinate the scientists. I mean, are you moving your fingers or are your fingers moving? Mm -hmm. Right, okay, they're just moving by themselves, you're not moving them. And yet this response tends to be pretty universal. Mm -hmm. Right here at the conference that we're giving this weekend, we have researchers in from around the world doing multiple studies on the changes that go on in the room when we do this work and in the human beings when we do this work. So interacting with this is what we call reconnective healing. And it doesn't matter where we interact. I played with your hand. If you had a problem in your liver or your knee or your ear, the intelligence of this work knows where to go. And what's been fascinating science so much is that the healings that happen through reconnective healing have virtually an instantaneous response. And the healings that are received tend to last almost every time for that person's entire lifetime. Uh -huh. In other words, uh, a couple nights ago I was in um, Bratislava and we were doing a demonstration and um, someone there brought up a woman and said, could you demonstrate on her? Her hands had severe crippling arthritis, her fingers were not able to move past this point for about the last 18 years so she was unable to pick up a glass of water unless it was really huge mm -hmm. she was unable to type on the internet she was unable to write a grocery list or leave a note for her family or sign her own name on a check and so they brought her up and I played just like we did with you a minute ago and her fingers started to move by themselves and within moments probably less than a minute she had full range of motion, no pain, no stiffness. It was just gone. Now, with all the years of the problem that she had, and you could see the problem because her, her knuckles were enlarged and swollen from the arthritis, something happened that the tissue changed instantaneously. The person didn't have to come back for visit after visit after visit. And most likely, if you're walking around the streets of Bratislava, you know, 
30, 40 years from now and you bump into that woman and go, wait a minute, didn't I see you at, at that presentation on reconnective healing? She's going to go, yep, that's me. Yeah. Okay. Some change happens outside of the limitations of the illusion of time and space. What are you feeling? Yeah, when you started, when you started to uh, that interview, I feel my whole back a little bit tintily. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling fine. It's fine. good. No, I'm asking you because I see the smile in your face yeah. and then your face is turning all red, all your blood is blowing. <laughs> and then put your heart out and so okay. it's good. So um, that's called reconnective healing. Yeah. And we teach people around the world how to do reconnective healing. Because, well, the way this started was I was a chiropractic doctor. I still am a doctor by license. I mean, I don't have a practice because I live on the road now 45 weeks out of every year approximately teaching this work. The book, The Reconnection, is in, I believe, around 36 languages or more so far already, including, of course, Dutch. Yeah. And we're working on getting our website translated. I think it's translated into a approximately 10 languages so far, and I do believe um, that one of the languages is Dutch and another one is German. But um, what happens is, is, I was a doctor and somewhere in my 12th year in practice a few strange things happened. I was awakened in the middle of the night by this bright light piercing through my eyes. I, I looked around to see what it was, and it wasn't anything seemingly spiritual or metaphysical. It, it was just the lamp next to my bed. It had turned itself on. Now, I had that lamp for 10 years. It hadn't turned itself on any other night, but it turned itself on that night. I thought maybe it could be an electrical short or something, except shorts usually turn things off. So I don't know, maybe it was an electrical long. I don't know what you want to call it. But at the same time, I felt people in my house. It is, let's just say it's not a comfortable feeling to wake up in the middle of the night and feel people in your house yeah. who weren't there when you went to sleep. So I got up very bravely with a knife and a can of pepper spray and my Doberman pincher and I went hunting. And um, I, really, I, I really didn't find anyone, but I felt people there. Mm -hmm. I felt them very strong. You could also hear them? No, yeah. I just so. felt them there. I don't know how to explain it. So I, I went looking for them for about 20 minutes. I couldn't find anyone. I finally went back to sleep. But that Monday, when I went into my office, seven of my patients, independently of one another, started telling me that they felt people in the room with us as we were. Some mm -hmm. said standing, some said walking, some said running, and two of them said it. it felt as if someone was flying around the ceiling. Now you would think that that would have gotten my attention too, but my other patients are saying, I can feel your hands before you touch me. And of course, I didn't believe them. So I said, yeah, close your eyes. So they close their eyes and I'd hold my hand and aim it in different directions. And they tell me, right shoulder, left ankle, they could feel where it was. And of course, their muscles started to move involuntarily like yours did. And their facial muscles would start to move and body breathing would change. And as this happened, my, as I played with this, my palm blistered a couple of times, mm -hmm. and, and my palm actually bled once, not like a stigmata or anything religious like that, but just, just like they took a little pin or a needle and stuck it. And suddenly, people started having healings, real healings. They're getting up out of wheelchairs, and cancers are being reported as vanishing. People are showing me their laboratory work where the tumors have disappeared. Uh, people are getting up out of wheelchairs, hearing and vision is returning. Parents of, of my younger patients are calling me and their children who had cerebral palsy or epilepsy are suddenly able to run and play and speak normally and not have seizures any longer. Not all of them, but a lot of them. 